This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now. Welcome everyone to this week's BMF podcast. This is our Ask an Expert session. I'm your host, Dow James, and I'm here today with Peter Thompson, businessman, prolific author, mentor, Lifetime Achievement Award winner, and founder of his very own consulting company. Amongst these achievements, Peter has set up a leasing company, which he later sold for $4.2 million. Welcome, Peter, to the Business Marketing Finance Podcast. Hi, Daryl. How's things with you? Great, Peter. Thanks for asking. It's good to have you on the show, finally. (laughs) It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, definitely. Now, over 25 years plus, you have helped coaches, consultants and business owners to share what they know. Can you tell us a bit about your journey, what it was like growing up and how you made a turning point to being the man you are today? Wow, that is a cracking question. I mean, how long have you got? I could talk for a week about that. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I, I won't go all the way back. I was born in Birmingham and okay. uh, having left school, worked in the bank and then decided to go on my own entrepreneurial journey. So I yeah. worked for a private investigator. Mm-hmm. So way back in February 1972, I decided oh. to leave that investigation and set up on my own. So I yeah. was tracing absconded debtors. That was my business. I was a private eye. Ah, and okay. after just uh, two years in business, we were being asked to trace 4,000 people a month. Wow. So uh, my, my business was based on the whole idea of rather than tracing people who'd run away from their partner or anything, I was yeah. dealing in the commercial, the commercial end yeah. where my clients were people like Cadbury Brothers um, or Nestle or R. White's okay. Lemonade, the yeah. tobacco company. I was tracing absconded shopkeepers. Wow. And the way, the way that I was doing it, and I learned a very early lesson in business was mm-hmm. I was doing it on a no-win, no-fee basis. Okay. And people couldn't understand how I was able to do that. But, of course, what they weren't understanding was the basic maths of the whole idea mm-hmm. in the sense of way back then, a long time ago, we're talking, you know, over 40 years ago, yeah. that um, I was charging four pounds to find somebody and nothing if we didn't. Mm-hmm. But because I could find an average of 60% of the people, yeah. that meant that was the same as getting paid two pounds 40, win or lose. Yeah, true. Yeah. So that was the difference. So, And a lot of people in the industry didn't really understand that. Anyway, I built that business up. I sold it to the staff and moved on. Mm-hmm. And I decided to get into the car phone business in the very early days of car phones when it was pressed to speak and released to listen. Yeah, and yeah. would you believe, Daryl, in those early days, in the Midlands, there was yes. one telephone line for the whole of the Midlands. Wow. There wow. was only 11 lines for the whole country. Right. <laughs> which meant that if 11 people were on the phone you couldn't use it yeah yeah and the midlands expanded and then they got 10 lines of their own but still only 10 lines yeah for the whole right. of the midlands today there's 10 people on a mobile phone within 10 feet of us you know yeah. all the time <laughs> yeah and yeah. These, these units used to sell for two thousand pounds Wow. And wow. Which, which was, if you think back then, it was a fortune to have yeah. a phone in your car. It wasn't a yeah. mobile phone, it was in your car. Yeah. And uh, the way that I used to sell it was I used to demonstrate it. And sometimes I used to walk around Birmingham where I lived. And I would run up to people who were getting into nice cars. Yes. And I would say to them, oh, excuse me, can I use your car phone? And they'd say, oh, I haven't got one. <laughs> and I'd say, all oh, right, come, come on, let me show Excellent. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it was, I learned that you had to have a very good opening when you were in selling as well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that business went really well, and I converted it into a leasing business, mm-hmm. um, which I sold five years later for a number of millions of pounds, and yeah. I retired. Wow. Uh, I, was, I was 42, mm-hmm. um, and so it done reasonably well. And then the company I sold out to, which was a main board London public company, its shares fell out the sky, cost me three million quid. Wow. And I had to to really start again. And so I decided to share what I'd learned along my business journey with people and life's journey. Yeah. And so I went to Nightingale Conan, the world's largest audio training company. 
I, I went to them with a completed product and said, look, would you sell this with me? Yeah. And they said, well, not that particular one because it was too much on sales and stuff, but would you revoice lead the field, which is their main program wow. for the UK market? So I said, yeah. wow, of course I will. I was so yeah. proud. It's like being asked to rewrite the Bible, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so I did that. It was really the start of the journey of me creating informational products. So yeah. I've written yeah. about seven books, 100 audio programs, 100 video programs. I have um, um, a TGI Mondays, which is my easy. It's on video, been on video for the last two years. Yeah. And I've written 850 of those. Yeah. So I've been doing that for about 16 years. Wow. And I've had newsletters, audio newsletters and various stuff and run mentoring programs. Yeah. And it's, it's, what it's created for me, uh, Daryl, which I think a lot of people love to have, it's mm-hmm. created for me a, bus- a business and a life of choice. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I, I can choose who I work with. I can choose when I work. I can choose how much I charge. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I sometimes live in Spain. I have a home in Spain. Nice. And I don't say this with any, you know, big-headedness or cockiness. I, this is what I've been able to do by sharing what I know with other people and helping other people succeed. Yeah, and I yeah. think it was Dick Ziegler who taught me. He said... Um, you can get anything you want as long as you help enough people get what they yeah, want. Yeah, I've heard him say that. Zig Ziglar is actually one yeah. of my favorite uh, authors and speakers, uh, definitely, yeah. Really, absolutely brilliant. Well, through my audio newsletter, unfortunately, I never got to um, interview Zig before he died, mm-hmm. but I've interviewed 172 people Wow. Um, over the years, and I've learned some amazing lessons from some of these incredible people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Paul Daniel, I interviewed Paul Daniels, the guy... People think it was a bit naff. He wasn't. I tell you what, the guy was a genius, absolute genius. I could tell you some great stories. So that's really the journey. Yeah. Um, and and today, I, I still, with, through my private clients, through my subscription programs, webinars, yeah. meetings, seminars, etc., I still do what I do. I help really business owners, coaches and sort of speakers and trainers, um, yeah. and any sort of business yeah. owner, accountants and things, yeah. to be more successful yeah. And to share what they know with other people. So that's yeah. what I, and I have a, a fantastic team of people. And yeah. we've all worked together for over 30 years. Wow. How many people do you currently have in your team? Well, we have six of us. Six of you. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's only six of us. Yeah. This is a lifestyle business. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's no nine to five in this business. <laughs> could, you, could you tell the audience a little bit about the, the skill set, the six people that you have? In your business, what they're saying. Yes, abs- abs- absolutely. The beauty is, for example, I've got my colleague Steve. Steve and I worked together over 35 years. Yeah. Um, he is just one of the best salesmen I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's a great business coach. So he's done over 5,000 business coaching sessions. Oh, nice. Uh, which is amazing. Yeah. And I, I met him, he came to sell me wine. Okay. Uh, yeah, over 35 yeah. years ago. I liked him so much. I said, stop selling wine and come and work with me. Oh, um, nice. And he came. Which he, and he, <laughs> this, was, this was a Friday afternoon. And he said, when do you want me to start? I said, Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been together ever since. You know, my, my yeah. wife and I have been in business for 38 years. Yeah. And yeah. She, she's phenomenal at the strategy side. And they've got Rachel, who's a brilliant marketer. And uh-huh. Beverly, who's hopefully on top of projects. And David, who's all stuff to do with the web. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then there's me that does a, a bit of most of it. So, yeah. There we go. So that's what it's all about. So, so you have a, a you have business. a fantastic team in your in your business. Have you ever had a business mentor who who inspired you while you was first starting your business? Have you ever worked I with a mentor? Yeah, I was very lucky. I've had a number of, of key business mentors. Mm-hmm. I would this is sound a silly answer in one way, but it's true. Okay. I would think my biggest mentors were all the audio programs that I listened to from Nike and Alconans. Yeah, okay. Because okay. I got to listen to people like Ted Nicholas, the mm-hmm. fabulous marketeer, but I then got to meet him and become friends with him mm-hmm. uh, and interview him. And then I listened to Earl Nightingale, obviously, and Brian Tracy, who I got to meet in an interview, and Richard oh, nice. Bander, the yeah. of NLP. And I got to meet him yeah. um, and interview him. Robert Cialdini, you know, the world's leading authority yeah. on persuasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the- Great people yeah. have taught me in their own ways. But there was one when I was in, I had a leasing company, which is the one that I sold. We had a finance business, yeah. which was a sort of spin from the car phone business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the one we sold for a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And very early in my career there, I met a man. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name was Stephen Blumenthal. And he was the father of Heston Blumenthal. Okay. The, the famous chef. Mm-hmm. And Stephen was uh, an absolute genius of a man in finance. Yeah. 
Yeah. And he was almost took me under his wing and taught me how to run a leasing business. Yes. And it was thanks to him, really, that we made so much money. Um, nice. He absolutely taught me how the system works. So that was, that was great. And I've had various other uh, mentors and coaches mm -hmm. uh, over the years because I've always known that I didn't know mm -hmm. enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, the day you stop learning is the day you stop burning. I completely agree. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and just like yourself, Darry, you know, we're, we're lifelong learners. Not yes. not just paying homage to those words, but we actually do it. You know, I exactly. read every day of my yeah. life. Every yeah. day I read. Yeah, like and, and yeah, and I go to webinars and seminars, and yeah. I'm online and I'm watching and I'm listening and I'm recording new things because yeah. I think Zig Ziglar again said it beautifully when he said this. He said. And you'll know this quote. He said, it's what you learn today that gives value to what you learned yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that for me is true. You know, if I keep on learning stuff, mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll have light bulb moments where I go, wow, that, that links to what I learned yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. And I put definitely. them two together and I've got, I've got something new out of it. So yeah. That, yeah. that's how. So a lot of really, you know, a guy called Chris Pamelian has been a, a great, great mentor to me. And yeah. a guy called Jason Jackman is, uh, is a coach to me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, if I ever get stuck in my head, I go to Jason, he unsticks me, you know. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I've been very, and my, and my wife is also a coach to me. She's, she, she understands. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I've been in business for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's a different personality for me. So she, we complement each other perfectly and she's able to um, see things that I don't see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you commented on, you know, interviewing so many great speakers and, and authors over the years. How did mm. you first approach them? What was your inroad? Was it because you had a business yourself or what was your, your strategy? What was your tactic to... Um, to right, okay. Them? Yeah, great question. Great question. Yeah. Um, I, I learned years and years and years ago that there's a four-word secret of success in life, mm -hmm. right? And, and these are the four, word, four words. Pick up the phone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, people's got to, people send text all the time. You don't know if it's got there and all the yeah. rest of it. People, you know, you can send letters, you can send emails, but nothing beats picking up the phone. Yeah. So yeah. If I wanted to interview somebody, firstly, I'd go and buy one of their products. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I'd pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. And I'd phone their office and say, I'd like to speak to this person. I'd like to interview them. Yeah. Um, and, and my style, though, was that I always limited my interviews to 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So only 20 minutes. Now, some of them got to 40 minutes, so I'd publish them as two 20-minute parts. Okay. Part yeah, one. yeah. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. But because I knew people were busy, they were more likely to agree to a 20-minute window than an hour window. Yeah, yeah. yeah? And, so, and so that's what I did. And, of course... Um, if you if you ask and you're pleasant about it and you try to be you know straightforward and honest and charming about things, yeah. most people who are successful mm -hmm. are very happy helping people because they were helped along their way too. Very true. And so it, it's only ever been as simple as pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. And I've never ever paid for an interview ever. I've been asked a couple of times, yeah, and I've always said no. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because that was the rule I made for myself early on, and I said that was the that was the case that I know that successful people will help me. I only yeah. have to ask them. Yeah. Uh, another, you know, I use lots of expressions. It's just my way of thinking, linking information in my head. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another expression I, I created was this: um, if you don't ask, they can't say yes. True. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. The worst that can happen is somebody says no or they ignore your, you know, your phone call or your email. So I guess, you know, definitely, I think all, everybody needs to just pick up the phone and just do it. Pick up the phone. Pick yeah. up the phone. What's the worst that can happen? You know, yeah. um, I, I've, got, I've got four sons mm -hmm. and one of them taught me, uh, they've all taught me good lessons over life. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of them taught this, this fantastic lesson about rejection. Mm -hmm. And he'd be about 13 at the time. He's over 30 now. That gives you some idea, but about 13 yeah. at the time. And he was at a school in Warwick and he was going to the school disco. Mm -hmm. It was a boys' school he was at and the girls' school next door was going to be at the disco as well. So it was the boys and girls at the disco, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I took him to the evening and then I went back and picked him up yes. and with my wife. And I said to him, I said, so, uh, I won't use his name because I know he wouldn't want me to. But okay. uh, I said to him, so how did you get on? Did you have a good evening? He said, yeah, I had a great evening. I said, did you dance with any of the girls from the school? And yeah. he said, yeah. And I said, well, did you ask any of the girls to dance? And they said, no. Yeah. And he said, 
Because I wondered how he dealt with it, you see. Yeah, and he yeah. said, yes, there was one girl that said no. Yeah. And I said, how did you feel about that? Yeah. And he said, I didn't mind. Yeah. And I said, that's strange for a 13-year-old boy, you know. How mm. come he didn't mind? Mm. And he said, Dad, I wasn't dancing with her before I asked her, and I wasn't dancing with her after I asked her, so it didn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. I love that yeah, story. Now that, that is a great lesson in life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, because... <laughs> You know, you hadn't got you hadn't got the sale before you asked, and you hadn't got it afterwards. So what? It's no difference. It's true. It's very true. No, that's no really difference. that's really excellent. So you mentioned um, about building profitable subscription programs. You know, how do you help businesses do that? Right. Well, there's a, a, a number of ways you can do a subscription program, and I perhaps think of subscription in a slightly different way. Darrell, it's this uh -huh. that I think any system whereby a client or customer or patient, depending which words one would use, mm -hmm. are paying you on a regular program mm -hmm. is a subscription. Yes. You know? It's exactly. not just a newsletter. It's not just a newsletter that's a subscription or something mm -hmm. like that. If somebody's under contract with you, if they're paying you every month, that for me is a subscription. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of subscription programs out there. Yes. And I would recommend to anybody who is interested in subscription to go buy a book from Amazon called The Automatic Customer by John Warrillow. The Automatic okay. Customer mm -hmm. by John Warrillow. He, he goes into the nine main subscription type programs mm -hmm. that you could have. But in my take on it is this, is uh, I have a subscription program that is a monthly, effectively it's a newsletter, but what it is, it's a monthly webinar of about an hour and a half. Yeah. And a portal. Mm -hmm. So you could have these as two separate ones, for example. So somebody could create a load of information, trainings, videos, audios, PDFs, etc., which I've done, mm -hmm. and put them online into a portal. Mm -hmm. And then people pay a subscription in order to access that information. Mm -hmm. Then the next level I have is the monthly webinar, but we add the two together and make a program. So mm -hmm. people join this. It's called the Achievers Club. So it's yeah. a great name. I've got theachieversclub.com. So people get live training from me every month yes. and access to the portal. Yeah. But then I have, I have a program where I do a two-day live meeting mm -hmm. every other month mm -hmm. for a group of uh, entrepreneurs and coaches and sort of speakers and trainers. Mm -hmm. And that's some subscription. So that's oh, another wow. type of subscription program. Yes. Uh, then I have private clients. But it's not ever just a one-off. I don't do one-off stuff. I'm, only, I'm a relational sort of person, not transactional. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, you know, a client will sign up for six months or usually they'll stay for two years, but they sign up for six months. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's a subscription. You yeah. know, my, my, I use the word subscription to mean any regular payment. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that, and I'll answer the specifics of your question, mm -hmm. is you always get paid before you do the work. Yes, true. Sure. So you don't have, you never have bad debt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? You always get paid. So how do we do that? Well, we make it clear to our clients so we get clarity on firstly, mm -hmm. who are they aiming their marketing at? Mm -hmm. Who is yeah. that typical person these days? That's called, as you know, Daryl, it's called the avatar. Yep. You know, so what's the description of that person? Who are they? Where are they? Mm -hmm. uh, what are their hopes and fears? And what stops them doing what they're doing? And um, mm -hmm. what, what do they really want, you know? And why do they want it? And all those usual good questions you can ask. Yes. And then we, we find out from the person who's going to be providing the subscription, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Yeah, a mentoring group is a, is a subscription program, by the way. I, mm -hmm. I used to run mentoring groups. I ran 13 mentoring groups over a seven-year period, two a month, right? Yep. For seven okay. months. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously one missing there. Um, yeah. So that was another subscription program. So we get clarity on who we're going to help. Yeah. And then we get clarity on the type of subscription program. Mm -hmm. And then we start to put together a marketing plan for how we're going to attract people into the top of our marketing funnel, yeah. having worked out what the customer journey is. So mm -hmm. where do they start? Where do they come to us? Where do they start? Mm -hmm. And what happens between the point of not being a member and starting to pay as a member, yeah, what yeah. we call the customer customer journey. Yes. And we want to track every activity along that road. Mm -hmm. Because I, I have another expression, which I think you might like, which is this. You'll know a Newton's third law, which is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yep. yeah, well, Peter's third law is for every action, there's an equal and opposite measurement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah, whenever you do something, you measure. 
Yes. Because unless you're measuring, you can't improve. Exactly. So yes. Measure the conversion rates at every point mm -hmm. between no sale and sale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at those points and say, right, do there need to be that many points? How do we convert higher rates? Mm -hmm. How can we help the customer get the results sooner and faster and easier and less expensive than they did before? Yep. And so all of that stuff is a systemized process. Yes. As Uh, as Michael Gerber said in the E-Myth and the E-Myth Revisited and all of his fantastic programs, mm -hmm. basically we're saying you need an extraordinary system that allows ordinary people and ordinary activity to generate extraordinary results. Mm -hmm. Whereas most people don't have that. They have an ordinary system, which means they have to be extraordinary and they still only get ordinary results because you can't be extraordinary all day long. It doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Even David yeah. Beckham never scored in every game, you know? Very true. Um, yeah. You can be darn good, but you, nobody scores in every game. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. uh, no golf wins every tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how extraordinary you are, you still are going to get good results, but not the best results ever. Yeah. The phenomenal system will give you. So once we've got, we're clear on who they are, yes. we're clear on who they're talking to, we're clear on the results they can achieve for people, mm -hmm. and we're clear on the type of subscription program it can be, yep. then we get going with the marketing. I think of it as two journeys. The journey from A to B is getting ready. Mm -hmm. The journey from B to C is making money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and people yeah. try and shortcut the journey from A to B. You can't yeah. shortcut that journey. Mm -hmm. You've got to get the bricks in the bottom of the pyramid in place. Yeah. Because otherwise yeah. You, can't, you can't build a pyramid without the bricks at the bottom. And a lot of people are jumping from sand and, mm -hmm. they, and they, slip, they slip over because they've not spent enough prep time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting you should say. So you spoke a little bit about funnels. Do you use funnels when you're actually promoting uh, your own, like your yeah, products absolutely, absolutely. and everything? Everything's uh, a funnel. Everything's a funnel. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll start off, we'll offer a free copy of my latest book, which is, yeah. and I'll, I'll offer you that to, to your listeners as well, yeah, obviously. Definitely. Is sure. that, yeah, it's called How to Write Your Business Book in Five Days or Less. Yes. You know? um, now, I actually wrote the book in 80 Minutes, Mm -hmm. And the way I wrote the book, and people say, 80 minutes, Peter, how do you write a book in 80 minutes? Well, I did a lot of prep, mm -hmm. right? But the actual writing, I just did a webinar and recorded it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I had it edited and put together, and then I looked at it myself and tweaked it a bit. I had some cartoons made and a design for the cover yeah. and all the rest of it. And bingo, you got a book, Yeah, you know? Yeah. But most people prevaricate and procrastinate, and five years later, they're still saying, I'm not sure what to put in chapter seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's get on a speed, success loves speed. Definitely. Yeah, just just get just get with it. So I give that away as yeah. part of the top of the funnel. And then people go into a series of autoresponders mm -hmm. where we increase the level of commitment they make to me, not necessarily in money, might be in time, effort, energy, trust. Yeah. Yeah. And to the point where they are ready for a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, or to come along to one of our seminars or a webinar, I do a lot of free webinars for people. Yep. And in those webinars, we then promote what gently, we then promote the next thing. Yep. Because again, part of our way of business, Darren, thank you for asking me these things, is it's a couple of things that I think is that I think that in business, you need to learn how to sell. Mm -hmm. And then you need to stop selling, and allow people to buy. Mm -hmm. um, Because we don't need to go around, in my opinion, and opinions, you know, belly buttons, aren't they? Everybody's got one. Yeah, But yeah. Um, my opinion is this, is you don't try and convince people. You just are convincing. Mm, mm. And, and that's very different. It's a different approach to business and to life. Yes. It's a very soft, easy approach. doesn't mean you're not confident. A friend of mine said, and he was so true, you have to live in a little village just south of Arrogant. Mm -hmm. Right, um, <laughs> and which is a nice expression, isn't it? And as you yeah. gather, I, I love all these expressions. Perhaps overuse them, but I love them anyway. No, they're good. Um, they're good. So, yeah, if you're confident about the fact of what you do, uh, if you've got belief in yourself, and another friend of mine said a great expression, which I'd written, which he said, most people reach the limit of their belief well before they reach the limit of their talent. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And isn't that good? Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. I wish I'd I wish I'd written it. Yeah. So if you've got high, high belief in yourself, if you are confident about the product or service you have and its efficacy, in the sense it will deliver the result that you promise, mm -hmm. and if you're living in alignment with who you are, you're in tune with your own identity. Yes. Then you you probably got the game on the way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say you've got it cracked, but you you're on the way. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you can be convincing. 
yes. about what it is you do and you can do for people. You don't have to convince them. They have to convince themselves. That's yeah. their job. Yeah. It's not my job to convince somebody. You know, there's an expression used in network marketing, um, which I've done a lot of speaking in that arena mm -hmm. um, over the years. I don't these days, but I used to, you know. And yeah. I, somebody said it to me once. I thought it was great. They said, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Mm, yeah, I've heard that one, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you have. So I don't try and convince people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just want to be convincing. I just want my passion to shine through. Yeah. That's, yeah. Been, that's been convincing. And if they then feel that it's for them, then I might let them buy it. Mm -hmm. I'm smiling. I'm smiling, by the way. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, which platforms do you currently sell your books on, and why those uh, platforms specifically? Right, we sell our, our, my book out of our own website, and my main website is peterthompson.com. Mm -hmm. And there's no, I, I know you were happy with me to say that. Oh yeah, I'm definitely, just, definitely. Yes. Yeah, I know, I'm not just slipping it in there, no, but no. just in case <laughs> any of your listeners don't know you. Were, and the Thompson has no P in it, so it's T, it has the H, but T H O M S O N, like Thompson Yellow Pages. So it's peterthompson.com, and yeah. we give the book away. Yeah. Um, the other uh, products that we have, things like other books, can be on Nightingale Conant, and they're obviously on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Whereas we concentrate these days on our own subscription programs, which we sell via webinars and mm -hmm. seminars mm -hmm. uh, and conversations. Yes. So, you know, we have a classic, and uh, Daryl, you, you're well aware how all this stuff works, yeah. classic marketing funnel, you know, bringing somebody at the top by providing yep. good quality information, yep. uh, then increasing the level of information and quality and commitment, Mm -hmm. And then finally coming to the point where you say to somebody, well, do you want to come past the paywall mm -hmm. and start to pay for a higher level of information and help? Yes. Um, that's the way we do it. So I think most businesses who are doing what I do, erect the paywall at some point mm -hmm. in the game mm -hmm. and say, well, you can have all of this for free, but if you want this bit, you've got to start paying, which is a fair proposition. You know, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, come, on, come along and try it. If you like it, you like me, it resonates. Yeah. Um, similar values we can do stuff together if we haven't we won't you know um some will some won't so what next that's yeah. the way it is yeah no it's true do you have any suggestions for up-and-coming writers to become better writers i know you you mentioned that someone can write a book in a well, business book in five days do you have yeah, any they suggestions can. from maybe some some of that text in there that you can help sure, people become better writers by all means. Yeah. I was taught by Dan Sullivan and Joe Polish on one of their podcasts. Mm -hmm. Some really fabulous, so I credit them massively. I think Dan Sullivan is a fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. And Joe Polish, by the way. Um, I've not met Joe, but I've, I've met Dan Sullivan and I've interviewed him. I think it was about an hour and a half or something. Very yes. unusual interview. Um, and he's just great. His material is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And he said on this, uh, this podcast that these days the research says that if you want high readership of your book, Mm -hmm. not high sales necessary, but high readership, mm -hmm. then you probably want to be in the 60 to 80 pages range. Okay. Yeah? It's interesting. And you're going to get, so that's short. Yeah. 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 But So if you're going to do a business book, mm -hmm. far better to do three books at 80 pages than one book at 240 pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So an 80 page book is probably 10 chapters of eight pages each or eight chapters of 10 pages each. Yeah. Yeah. So you're probably only talking between 10 and 15,000 words. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the sort of area. Now, mm. most people can write, I don't know, if it was 10,000 words, most people can write 2,000 words a day. Yeah. 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 With, you, the way you get to write a load of words is ask the right questions of yourself. True. Very true. So mm -hmm. you asked a question and you said, what are the possible ideas I'd like to share with my potential reader mm. in the chapter on X? Yeah. And if you ask that question about 10 chapters, you mm -hmm. ask the question 10 times, you'll write down a number of tips. You might down five, six, seven, 10 tips, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just quick little ideas. So let me give you an idea. Let's say, let's say I was going to write a chapter on um, body language. Yes. And I said, right, so it's about communication skills. The book's communication skills, the chapter's body language. Yep. And I said, right, so what are the possible tips I want to share with people about body language? Mm -hmm. And say, right, I'm going to talk about eye accessing cues. I'm going to talk about the little red uh, bit in the corner of your eye called the caruncle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about crossed and open gestures. Yep. I'm going to talk about open and closed hands, palms up and palms down. I'm going to talk about pointing fingers. Yep. Uh, I'm going to talk about head movement. You can see what I'm doing here. Boom, yes, boom, boom, yeah. Boom. yeah. yeah. Right. Then you go back to those list of tips and you write a paragraph about each. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes you might write a page about some of them, but you write a paragraph or a page. Mm-hmm. Now, I would quickly write eight pages about body language on what I just said there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. simple. Right? So if you could do that, if, if somebody had the discipline to do that 10 times, mm-hmm. the book's done. Very true. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's it. Then what it needs is the best thing it needs is it needs a cracking title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The title sells the book and a very, good strap. Yeah, yeah, always does. With a good strap yeah. line. Yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, Daryl. I don't think you know the answer to this. I'm doing this on purpose because I think it'll help you. It helps me certainly, and I think it'll help your listeners as well. Okay. What's, yes. What's the first thing do you think you write when you're going to write a book? Um, I myself, um, I'm actually in the middle of writing my second book now, um, yeah. and the very first thing I write is uh, well, I do a plan of escape from and arrive to. So where I want to take the the reader, you know, where they, where are they escaping from? Where do they want to go to? Where do they want to arrive to? And I do all the individual steps in between, similar to what you just outlined. Then nice. I take the very first, the very first one, uh, milestone, and break that down again further. And then I start to write that similar, similar strategy to be fair. Um, so that's very the very first strategy. thing I do, yeah. Um, but halfway or somewhere in between, I'd actually start to think about the title. And um, I've probably spent a very long time on the title and the strap line because, um, Good. yeah, that, that's what sells. That's what sells books. That and the, the yeah. Let me suggest the one little idea to think about. Yeah. You're actually answering part of it in the way you do yours, but most people don't. Mm-hmm. I believe the first thing you write is the order form. Mm. Okay. Because the, the order form will contain the title. Mm-hmm. It will contain the strap line. It mm-hmm. will contain a summary of what the book is going to do for the reader. Mm-hmm. Not what they're going to read about, but what it's going to do for them. What yes. the benefit they're going to get from it. Yes. Um, yes. It's going to be some idea of price, and it's really going to contain the whole idea of the marketing promise. Mm-hmm. And then you write the book to meet the promise. Mm. Yeah. 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 I like that. I do like that. Now, the process you described does that. Mm-hmm. But I was just tweaking that little bit. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Just adding a little bit in the front end because... One of the things we need to ask, answer ourselves about writing a book, as you know, is why. Mm-hmm. Uh, why are we writing the book? Is it for fame? Is it for money? Is it a lead generator? Is it, mm-hmm. is it to prop open the door? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, it to fill up, uh, is it to fill up the garage? Um, yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. You've got to have the good, solid reason why. Is it a legacy? Is it to create significance or credibility yeah. in the marketplace? I mean, yeah. what are all the things we're doing it for? Because mm-hmm. when we have that clarity, mm-hmm. uh, and then when we write the order form, the mm-hmm. next bit, the writing the book's easy. Because yes. we know why and we know what. Yes. We've just got to write the how now. Very true. Very true. Yeah. So do you um, currently use any other platforms to sell your books? I mean, I know you mentioned Amazon. Do you use places like Lulu? Are you on Google Play? Um, have you produced um, audio books, ver- audiobook versions? I know you have one audio book that you, uh, yes. that you um, converted. Do you, do, what is your strategy behind that? Do you create multiple products out of one? Or is it mainly oh. just the, the paperback? No, 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 no. I may not give you an example. Years ago, the, f- yeah. uh, one of the first book I wrote was called Silly Way to the Top. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was produced by Kogan Page. It, pro- it sold at about ten pounds, and it probably sold three thousand copies. Right, mm-hmm. so I probably made about three thousand pounds myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. about a pound a copy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I took that same information and I videoed it all later on, some years later. Yes, and I created a program called the Accelerated Business Growth System, mm-hmm. where in it was thirty six modules, and each module had a video, an audio. Mm-hmm. workbook, templates, and it was a big program. It came in a big box like a small TV. Yeah? Yes, yeah. And we sold, we sold that at £3,000 a copy, mm-hmm. right? And we sold 600. Mm-hmm. That's 1.8 million, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. So I sell my own programs mm-hmm. because I found one of my programs, which was called Conversation, the Power of Persuasion, which mm-hmm. I did for Nightingale Conant, and I thank them for it. Mm-hmm. They did... 2.4 million in sales mm-hmm. and, uh, in dollars, right? Mm-hmm. And they paid me a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. For which I was very thankful, but yes. I'd rather have had the 2.4 million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I self published the vast majority of my stuff. We have stuff here and there and bits and pieces, mm-hmm. but for me, 
the purpose of most of the audio programs is to lead people further down the journey of being connected with them. Yes. So, yeah, I've got a hundred video programs. I've got a hundred audio programs. Mm -hmm. I have a video blog, which has been going for 16 years. It used to be written, but now it's video. Yeah. And I've written 854, I did it the last one this week, 854 copies of that. So it's been going for over 16 years, yes. 854 of them. You know, I'm a prolific writer mm -hmm. um, because... I know the writing is what engages the people who are in my space in the marketplace mm -hmm. who then say, oh, that was a good video, Peter. I enjoyed that. And then maybe we'll have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all leading to the subscription programs. Yes, 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 yes. That sounds very good. Now, Peter, how have you found the best ways to market your books? You mentioned working with Nightingale, but also self-publishing your own stuff. How, yeah. how is it that you found um, has been the best way? I know technology has also you know, changed a lot since um, you know, the last 20-odd years. How have you found the best ways to market your own book? Well, when I say book, I would put the word book in inverted commas because the book yeah. is really a program of some description because a book might then become an audio, might become a video, might become a subscription, sure. might become yeah. a product. Yes. It might be digital, it might be hardback, it might be softback, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the way that, way that we've done it historically is we've used direct mail to uh, promote subscription programs. So I used to spend a lot of money on direct mail every month. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, with the growth of email marketing, we do a lot of email marketing. We do Facebook advertising. We do LinkedIn advertising. We do LinkedIn posts, Facebook posts. Yep. Um, we do a little bit on Instagram, but not much these days, but I think it's going to increase. Mm -hmm. um, and we obviously do a lot of webinars mm -hmm. because for me, because of the type of business I have, which is very much a people type business, yes. is I want people to get to know me mm -hmm. so and my team. So that's why I do webinars, because in an hour's webinar, firstly, I give away some amazing information. Yes. Right? And yes. That's I don't hold back. I'm a great believer, as Gordon Herschel Lewis said mm -hmm. in his fantastic book, Sales Lessons That Sizzle. He said mm -hmm. this. He said, fire your big guns first. Yeah. 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 And so I like, to, I like to fire the big guns first. Like today, you know, I've given you some great information here that people yeah, can definitely. take away and actually use. Definitely. This is real pr practical stuff. This isn't just what. This is how to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So uh, on a webinar, I find a webinar is fabulous. Um, shortly, and I don't want to date any of your, the stuff that we're doing today, Daryl, mm -hmm. but shortly I'm, uh, I'm doing some one-day events. Mm -hmm. um, and I do that two or three times a year. And I find that's a great way to promote what it is that we do. You know, people can come along, they can meet us all, they can interact, yeah. they can learn some cracking ideas. Yes. And then once they've received that, we can say, well, look, why do you, do you want to come on the rest of the journey with us? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's the way that we do that type of yeah. thing. So from a pure book marketing point of view, yeah. there are these days with digital marketing, there's so many options, particularly with things like Facebook, LinkedIn, and all the social media. Yeah. But email marketing isn't dead yet, and direct mail isn't dead yet. Mm -hmm. It just wouldn't work quite so well, I don't think, for just a book unless the back-end offering was substantial. So yeah. if the book is part of a series of offerings, you could yeah. certainly sell a book in any way you like. Mm -hmm. um, it depends if you've got the back-end ready. Yes. Um, yeah, because that's where the money is. The money's in the back end, not usually Definitely. in the front end. Yeah, yeah. That's why, that's, why, that's why I give the book away. Yeah, yeah. You know, I give the book away. I mean, the book sells it. We've got on the back of the book, it says price £10, value priceless. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned about your training um, that you have available in your workshops. Where can people connect with you on that? How can they actually um, go to one of your training sessions? Um, what are your social media links and your website addresses as well? Right to get they, they'll involved? they'll find me on the web. They'll find me. The easiest way is to find me at peterthompson.com. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's, the, that's the front end for everything. And, and get yourself a copy of the free book. You know, I'll, I'll send you the book free. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, why not? I think we asked them to some, some post some packaging, but that just yeah. determines the seriousness of somebody. Yeah, definitely. Um, once, you, once you're on there, then you will receive our various bits of marketing mm -hmm. uh, with our one-day events, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm doing a one-day event, uh, a series of them now, on how to run a profitable subscription program. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's interested in spending a day with me, um, then they can do that. Or they could, they could drop me an email, which would be success at peterthompson.com. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, again, the Peter Tom, the Thompson bit has no P. T-H, it's got the H, T-H-O-M-S-O-N, 
So yeah. success at Thompson.com. Yeah. Uh, and say, look, interested in one day events, interested in book writing, interested in webinars. Yeah. Let me know what you're interested in. Uh, yeah. Facebook, you'll find me on Facebook, obviously as Peter Thompson, and on LinkedIn, you'll find me as Peter Thompson. Yeah. You'll find me as the Achievers Club. So theachieversclub.com, we have that, and the Achievers Club is on Facebook as well. Mm-hmm. So all the usual ways, Daryl. Yeah, fantastic. Now, Peter, finally, if you could tell your younger self anything, what would Ooh, it be? What a great question. What a super last question. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, you know, that is such a good question. You've gathered, normally I'm very quick with answering questions, yeah. but I just want to give you a really, really powerful answer for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I, yeah. I would say to my younger self, mm-hmm. do exactly what you did by being maintaining your attitude of positivity and realize for yourself that the word selfish is the most positive word in the English language because you have to respect yourself to respect others. You have to love yourself to love others. You have to take care of yourself financially to be able to do the same for other people. And some people would call those actions selfish, but for me, selfish is a very positive word. If we take it in the right way, I'm not seeing being uh, penny pinching. I don't mean selfish in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you have to look after yourself first. You have to be true to who you are. You know, it's the best Shakespeare quote, isn't it? And this above all to thine own self be true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think I would say to my younger self, continue. You've done pretty well with it, be, but always be true to yourself and be as selfish as you can be in a positive meaning of the word, because in that way, you'll be able to help more people. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's cool. I like that. Very wise words from Peter Thompson. Peter, I do thank you again for coming onto the show. I know you've been a, you're a busy man and you've got multiple companies that you're running and <laughs> doing great things. I do thank you for being on the show, Peter. Any last words you want to say to everybody? It was absolutely my pleasure and thank you so much for involving me in this and if, any, if I can help anybody then, then by all means do so and Daryl, I think you're doing a superb job out there making such a difference. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much everybody. This has been this week's Business Marketing Finance Podcast. We'll see you next week. Thank you. This is the Business Marketing and Finance Podcast. The podcast for all your business marketing and financial needs. Get insight from experienced professionals as they delve deep into their passions and share their knowledge each week with your host, Daryl James. Like to follow or learn more? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button now.